Hey y'all and welcome back to another Wedding Wednesday. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome. Every Wednesday we go over tips, tools, and techniques in order to plan your wedding. In today's episode, we're talking about the sixth month of your engagement period priorities. So where should you be halfway through your engagement process? This is based off of a 12 month engagement period, but a lot of these tips even if you're having a 14 month engagement or a six month engagement, it is totally doable to plan your wedding in those timeframes. So let's get started on the six month of your engagement priorities. First, we need to check in. We need to check in with where you're at. How is your budget looking? Are you still on track? How are your vendors? You do have a venue, a caterer, entertainment, hopefully at least looked at, your photographer and your officiant should be booked by this point in time. And you and your future spouse should talk about if you want a coordinator or a planner for your event. Next, how is your planning process going? Have you and your fiance settled on a theme? Are y'all brainstorming attire ideas? Are y'all coordinating decor, whether it's DIY or going through a rental agency? Are you working on your timeline, really getting the sequence of events down to really map out your big day? This timeline can still be really rough. It doesn't have to be fine tuned yet, but as long as you're putting together the small puzzle pieces to make up your big day and then translating those to the vendors you've already chosen, you'll be good to go. Also, check in with your wedding binder. Your wedding binder is your roadmap. So make sure that your thoughts, your themes, your inspiration, all of the things that you brain dumped at the beginning of your engagement period still stand true. They may need to be tweaked. They may need to be just adjusted as you have gone through your wedding planning process. Just make certain decisions and check in with your wedding binder. We just had our lodging and transportation video a few weeks ago, so do make sure to work on your lodging and transportation. You'll wanna go ahead and get your rooms blocked and transportation booked, at least deposits paid to hold your date for those transportation services so your guests will be able to get where they need to go, whether it's a trolley, whether it's a shuttle bus, whether it's just coordinating with the hotel or the lodging, if they're providing a shuttle service to the venue, just work out your lodging and travel detail during the six month priority. Next check-in is a big one. How are your save the dates? Have you gotten your save the dates proofed? Do you have products already? Have you bought envelopes? Have you bought stamps? Have you been working on your calligraphy or have you found a calligrapher to work on your addresses? I would suggest maybe even purchasing a return address stamp at this point in time, that way you don't have to write your return address over and over again. And it's a really classy way to really welcome your guests into you and your new fiance's marriage together with a collective stamp. Speaking of save the dates, they need to go out, but you need to have addresses on the save the dates to go out. So how are your lists progressing? Your list for pre-wedding parties, your list for your bachelor bachelorette party, then your list for your ceremony, your list for your reception, how are those going? You're probably broken your list down into groom's list, bride's list, shared friends, shared family, whatever you're working with, and then you have a collective master list. So of that master list, are you having trouble getting addresses? It's really, really difficult to get your friends, family, loved ones, whomever, to cooperate in giving you addresses. It seems like it would be an easy task, but apparently it's not. So have your mama get on it, have your friends get on it, have people close to those guests that you're having trouble getting addresses from, get with those potential guests to get those addresses and just shout out on Facebook, give them a phone call, go to their house if you, you know, if you can just drive by and get their number off their mailbox, whatever you need to do, get the addresses for the guests so you can send your save the dates out. And as you assemble your lists, remember that an Excel spreadsheet is a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing, because not only will you have the names of the people attending your wedding or hopefully attending your wedding, you'll also have their addresses. If you're going to be putting maybe instead of Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, you're going to have, you know, John and Stacy so-and-so, or however you're doing your wording, that information is really key to have on your Excel spreadsheet as well, as well as how many guests, if they're bringing kids, or if it's just more than two or three people, just to have your guest count on your Excel spreadsheet. Also, if you're doing any pre 
meal decisions, like if you're going to have steak or fish or chicken or fish or whatever your decision is for your catering menu, having that information on your Excel spreadsheet is also really successful. Then another category in your Excel spreadsheet for your lists is going to be, can they attend your rehearsal dinner? Can they attend your wedding? Can they return your reception? Can they attend your pre-wedding parties? And just having all that information in one space is just so, it makes it so much easier. So remember to use your Excel spreadsheets when you're going through your lists, getting your addresses and prepping your save the dates and your invitations. So back to lists, we talked about your ceremony list, we talked about your reception list, we talked about your pre-wedding party list. You also need to make sure that your best man or your maid of honor or whoever is helping plan your bachelor bachelorette parties, that they have as much information as they possibly can to anything that you would in, in particularly like. So any kind of food, any kind of activities, any kind of you know special costume things, anything like that, that you would like to have for your bachelor bachelorette party. Because six months in advance, if you're traveling somewhere or if you're renting a hotel room or whatever you're doing, sometimes the planning process takes a little bit of time. So six months out from your wedding, you're about five months out from your bachelor bachelorette party. So make sure to get as much information to your best man and your maid of honor or whomever is planning your bachelor bachelorette party as soon as you can. Now for your pre-wedding parties, if someone is hosting you a pre-wedding party, get your lists for who you would like to attend those parties to the host as soon as possible. The six month mark is a really good time to do that as well. <sighs> All right guys, so that was the check-in part. Let's talk about some new stuff. What do you need to prioritize in the six month of your engagement period that's new? First, we need to talk about desserts. You need to settle on a cake baker or somebody to provide desserts, even just talking to your catering company if you've chosen them already, which you should have chosen them already at the six month mark. They can also provide cake services for you as well, as well as dessert bars. We had a pie bar and it was just super delicious. Um, we just had the lady who was assembling and making our cake uh, also do a pie bar on the day of our wedding and it was just really, it was really wonderful. So just talk about cakes and desserts. The big, big thing for the six month priority mark is to commit to attire. If you haven't bought your wedding dress yet, you need to buy your wedding dress. It is getting to be crunch time because that wedding dress is going to take three to four months to even come in if you're not ordering it straight off the rack. Then you're going to have to get alterations. Those can take up to a month or two and you just don't wanna get your wedding dress back the week of your wedding. You just don't want that. So just make sure that you have committed to your wedding dress, that you're getting all of your undergarments, that you're getting all of your jewelry sort of assembled, that you're getting everything together, including from shoes to veils, that everything is getting put together. This goes for the grooms as well. Make sure to commit to your tux, your suit, your shorts and a t-shirt, whatever you're wearing on the big day. The groom needs to settle, rent, so that he can also get his suit altered if needed later on down the road when it does arrive in. This brings me to bridesmaids and groomsmen. Bridesmaids and groomsmen need to start shopping if they haven't started shopping already. The groomsmen, it's really dependent on the groom when he decides on what he's going to wear. And then maybe all the guys can go out and, you know, have a big day where they go and try on suits and get their shirts and get their shoes just to make it as seamless and easy as possible. Because the more it sounds like a burden or it's just something that's gonna be really hard for them to accomplish, the longer they're gonna wait. And you don't want them waiting until the month of the wedding to pick up their tuxedos or even order their tuxedos in hopes that they come in on time. Next topic to consider in the six month of your wedding engagement period is bartending and bar services. You need to start talking to bartending vendors. Um, I'll have a video coming up here really soon on some tips, tricks, and techniques on selecting a bartender and bar services and beverage services for your wedding. Sometimes your caterer will also provide the service. So just communicate with your vendors and just make sure that it's not a redundant task that you could just hire a current vendor you have on your list but there are some really great wedding bartenders and beverage services to choose from depending on where you're getting married at but do make sure to start shopping around for bartending and bar services and tune in when we do our bartending and bar services video now six months into your wedding planning process you probably have spoken to your caterers you've probably spoken to your wedding venue you've probably spoken to a lot of your other vendors and 
you need some rentals. If you need rentals for your event, the six month mark is a great time to commit to your rentals. Go ahead and just make a long list, check in with your vendors, make sure it's not a redundant process and do your rentals. Get it at least paid deposit on your rentals to hold them for your date, but get your rentals organized, get them deposited and get them in line to be set up for success for your big day. Along with cakes and desserts, you'll also want to start doing your catering tastings and settled on your menu. That way you can update your website, which is something you should also be doing as we're going through this process is updating your website. So with your catering tastings, you'll also probably be settling on your place settings. You know, what kind of plates, what kind of napkins, what kind of forks, what kind of cups, what kind of tablecloths, what kind of runners, what kind of chargers, what kind of, just what kind of table decor the caterer can provide for you. If you do need to add this to your rentals list, just make a note of it and take care of it. Next for month six, start assembling your playlist for your entertainment. Whether you're having a band or a DJ, start thinking about what kind of songs you want for your first dance, what kind of songs you want for your cake cutting, what kind of songs you want for your entrance, what kind of songs you want for your processional, all of the soundtrack of your wedding. This includes ceremony all the way to the big exit at the end of the night. So start making your playlists, sit down with your fiance and just make a day of it. Sit in your jammies on the couch, blaring some music in your living room and really just make the playlist for your wedding day. Remember, there are such things as not dance songs. So maybe put those during your dinner service or a cocktail hour sometime when it's just a mix and mingle sort of part of the timeline. During this time frame, you'll also want to start any pre-marriage counseling that's necessary by your officiant or your religious sect. Six months before your wedding is usually the point in time where your pastor or your rabbi or whoever part of your religious sect requires some marriage counseling in some cases. If it's not a necessity to have pre-marriage counseling at this point in time, maybe between six and three months, you and your future spouse just sit down and talk about some really important topics. You need to start talking about, you know, kids. You need to start talking about budgets. You need to talk about where you're gonna live. You need to talk about jobs. You need to talk about the priorities in your life that may not seem really all that important. There's some really great things online, some um, you know questions to ask your future spouse before you get married um, that I would really, really suggest. My now husband and I have been together for eight years when we got married and we went through a small version of wedding counseling before we got married. You know, I thought that we didn't need it. We had been through everything. We had been through all sorts of trials and tribulations in the eight years we had been together before we got married. But there were some great things that our counselor just he asked and it was good to just get it out in the open. You know, we both knew our answers about kids. We both knew our answers about budget. We both knew our answers about, you know, what happens around the house and kind of my role and his role. But just to get it out in the open and say it out loud, really put some clarity and bonds you and your future spouse together and just establishes that teamwork of, okay, we're both on the same page. Lastly, a few housekeeping items of videos we've already gone over, so do refer back to all of the videos on this playlist if you are just now starting your engagement period to really help you get you on your way. First is to work on your timeline. You need to get a broad stroke timeline down. You also need to get a very tightly knit timeline down. So just continue to work on your timeline. Communicate with your maid of honor. Communicate with the mother of the bride. Communicate with your wedding coordinator, your wedding planner. Communicate with your vendors as you progress in your timeline. It is important at the six month mark to really just start filling in the details. You're going to start acquiring all this information and really just getting the details pretty much fed to you and getting them down on paper will really just give you some sort of structure to the day in this big whirlwind of a planning process we're going through. Within this timeline, start working on your shot lists for your photographer, or at least talking to your photographer about a shot list. Get about 100 to 200 photos of must have, you know, the bride dancing with her father, the groom dancing with his mother, everybody eating, people laughing or talking. Is it going to be more posed? Is it gonna be more candid? Just start talking with your photographer about shot lists. Next in the six month timeline is self care. Start your diet, exercise, skincare, hair care, beauty techniques. If you are trying out some new products, 
try it early. So six month mark. If you are trying some new vitamins, if you're trying some new lotions, if you're trying some new hair masks, if you're trying some new waxing techniques, try it early, like in the six month mark. This brings me to my next topic. You need to start doing your hair and makeup trials. If you have a stylist selected, great. Go ahead and just start brainstorming. Start talking about the details. If you don't start shopping around for a hair and makeup artist and find somebody that you can get booked for the day of your wedding, especially if you're having a destination wedding and they're needing to travel because then they're going to need lodging and all of that good stuff. So make sure to start prioritizing hair and makeup during this time frame as well if you have not done so already. Lastly, and I cannot stress the importance of this enough, y'all, have a date with your future husband or wife really cut out a time for you guys to go out or even just stay home and cook and have a movie night and really just look at each other. Not a, I'll cook you dinner, then we'll sit on the couch, watch a movie, and then we'll go to bed. I'm talking alone time. I'm talking talk to each other. Talk about work. Talk about friends. Talk about things that are stressing you out. And cover some ideas about the wedding. Make sure that you are both on the same page. Make sure that you are cooperating in this in this task. Some grooms really don't care and are just like, just tell me what to wear and when to show up. But for the health of your marriage, you need to be in this together. You need to be in this together. You need to spend time looking at each other and bonding with each other and talking over the issues. Communication, not confrontation. So make sure that you are constructing your conversations in a healthy way, that you are working through problems, working through issues appropriately, and that each other's on the same page. You just want to check in. But it's also a really great time for you guys to talk about things that are not like the wedding. Like, how's work going? What are some things that are stressing you out about your friends or your family members or some things that are going on outside of the wedding? Because you've probably been drowning in nothing but wedding stuff for the last month or two or three or five or six. And you haven't checked in on your own mental health. So check in with each other. That is your forever life partner. And just make sure to sit down, love on each other, look at each other and talk about, talk about life and really just get reconnected. So I do hope this video was helpful on some tips, tools, and techniques in order to plan your wedding, especially as it pertains to the six month mark of your engagement period. Please leave in the comments below any tips or tricks you have for your fellow brides, grooms, or family members to help them plan a wedding. Also feel free to leave in the comments below any tips or tricks you have for me on this channel. Anything you would like to see, anything you would like me to cover, any questions you have about this video or any other videos. And if you are just starting your wedding planning process, do not fear. We have everything that you need to know on this playlist up until this point in time. We will have videos on a lot of the topics that we covered today based on the six month mark. So we'll be talking about your bartending services. We'll be talking about rentals. We'll be talking about so many other things. So do stay tuned for new videos every Wednesday. Until then, I'm Jane Corley with Pick Visions, Media Arts and Photography. See you later, guys.